Hi, Timothy Unker here, and in this video, I'm going to demonstrate some of the trig functions available in C++. So let's get started. First off, I'm going to include my standard header file by typing include, then IO stream. I'm also going to include my math.header file here because I'll be using some of the trig functions. I'm also going to let the program know that I'm using the standard namespace by typing using namespace std with a semicolon after it, and I'm going to create my main function. Okay, Within my main function, I'm going to create a value called radiance, uh, which is going to be a float. So I'm going to create a float called radiance. I'm going to set that equal to pi half radiance, which is 3.14 approximately times 0 0.5. Okay, We're going to use that for our trig functions for sine, cosine, and tangent. I'm going to type C out and then two left brackets, and then we're going to run the sine of pi half radians. So I'm just going to pass in radians here, and we're going to end this line and return zero at the end of the function and close my main function. I'm going to open up a terminal now and compile. So I'm going to type G++ and then the name of the program, which is trig functions dash dot C++ dash O for output, and let's call this trig underscore functions, and went ahead and compile, and now let's run trig underscore functions, and we get one, okay? So the sign of pi halves is one, all right? Now, if I were to change this and say that this were uh, was zero, so if I do zero times a half, it's still going to be zero, and now we'll run it, I will get the sine of zero is zero. Okay, so let's just show you that. Okay, and we get zero. Okay, now uh, keeping with this, if I do 3.14 and I do times 0.25, which is pi fourths, that should give me approximately the square root of two over two or around 0 0.707. Now, obviously, I'm approximating pi with 3.14. Um, so it's not going to be exactly that value, but let's run it. We'll get pretty close. Yeah, 0 0.7068. So basically 0 0.707, uh, you know, basically the square root of 2 over 2. Okay. Now, if I do the cosine of pi fourths, I will get roughly the same value. Again, we're approximating pi, so it's not going to be exactly the same. But uh, we get yeah 0 0.707388. So yeah. All right. Um, if I change this to 0.5, the cosine of pi halves is approximately zero. Again, we're not exactly, we don't exactly have pi, but we're close. So we get 0 0.000 and then a few numbers over. If it were exactly pi halves, it would be zero. And if I change this to just zero, I should get one because the cosine of zero is one. Okay, and we get one, all right? Now I can also do the tangent. And if I change this to 3.14, um, as the tangent, the tangent of pi halves is actually undefined, but as you get very close to it in 3.4, 3.14 is not exactly pi, as you get very close to it, you're going to get very close to a high number. So this should be a pretty large number. And uh, we got to well, we got to compile it again. And then if I run it, yeah, I get 1,255.85. Now, if I just add 3.1415, it's going to get an even larger number. Okay. And if I compile this. And then run. Now we're up to 21,500. So as we're getting closer, the number is getting higher and higher. And at the actual value of pi halves, it is undefined. Okay, so that's sine, cosine, and tangent. I also want to talk about arc sine, arc cosine, arc tangent, and then arc tangent 2. Uh, so those are inverse functions. So first off, let's talk about... Um, arc sine. 
okay? So sine is a value between negative one and one. So if I do 0 0.707, this is going to give me approximately pi fourths, okay? So if I save this and open up eShell here and recompile and rerun, I get 0.785, which is approximately pi fourths, okay? Um, <clears throat> Now, if I change this to 1, I'm going to get pi halves, okay? So I can rerun this, okay, and I get 1.5708, okay? Now, if I increase this to more than 1, the sign can only be between negative 1 and 1. So this is going to give me back NAM, which is not a number when I compile and run, because it's not a value that sign could be, okay? So it says NAN, not a number. All right. So we have to be between negative 1 and 1. The same with uh, cosine here. Okay, so if I do cosine of negative 1, the arc cosine, this is going to give me uh, approximately pi. Okay, so it's going to be close to 3.14. Yeah, 3.14159. So it gives me pi. Okay, if I do just one, it's going to give me zero, okay? I get zero, okay? Now, if I do uh, the arc cosine of the value zero, I should get pi halves, okay? Because, and 1.5708 is equal to pi halves, okay? Now, if I go back and I want to do arc tangent, and I want to do our tangent of, um, let's say, uh, let me think of a value, our tangent of a very large value, let's do 100,000 here. This is going to be close to pi ads, okay? So if I run eShell and then go run this, compile it and run, yeah, I get very close. Remember, uh, pi halves was 1.5708, so I get very close to pi halves. Um, okay, and now let me, uh, let me go and get rid of this line here, and I'm going to create two integers, uh, let's call them num1 and num2, and we'll say num1 equals 45, and num2 equals uh, 33, doesn't really matter. Um, what I'm going to do is now num1 and num2 here, and I'm going to use arctangent2, okay? So we can take these two values, and this is going to be uh, basically num1 divided by num2, and it's going to give me the arctangent of that value, okay? All right, so recompile this, and then rerun, and we get 0 0.938, that's radians, okay? So I hope this video helped you a little bit, learn a little bit about the trig functions available in C++. If it did, please hit the like button as it helps get out to more people. I want to thank you for watching and hope to see you in the next one.